Welcome. Today, we celebrate the many gifts of women. Gifts of women in the Presbyterian Church is held to celebrate women of today and yesterday. We're reminded of the sacrifices of women in the Bible, and this year's focus is mainly on Mary, mother of Jesus. Today, our service will be led by women. Most of our music will be written, composed, and performed by women. I do hope you'll find the service inspirational. Before we begin, I'd like to mention beginning today and going through May 7th, we'll be taking up our Presbyterian Women's Spring Birthday Offering. We will conclude with a covered dish luncheon in the Fellowship Hall following the service on that day. Meat and desserts will be provided. Please bring a side dish, if you feel so moved, a donation to the birthday offering. I would like to take this time to point out this beautiful banner that's hanging behind me. The banner focuses on Mary Magdalene, who stayed with Jesus during his crucifixion. Jesus also first appeared to Mary Magdalene at the tomb after his resurrection, and she was the first person to preach the good news of that miracle. The Presbyterian women felt that creating a banner depicting Mary Magdalene at the tomb with Jesus was an appropriate way to represent this year's theme. Would Jane Long please stand? Bethesda Presbyterian Church would like to joyfully thank Jane for her leadership, talents, time, and efforts coordinating this complex banner project. Jane took our theme and she drew out the design for the banner. She enlarged and designed to create the pattern. The colors as well as the fabrics for the piece were carefully selected. Jane's leadership came into play as she patiently instructed the Bethesda women how to cut and iron each piece of fabric from the pattern. Then a black trim was, was meticulously ironed and bonded around every little piece. Jane, on behalf of Bethesda Presbyterian Church and the Bethesda women, we thank you for all your talents and efforts involved in creating this meaningful and beautiful Easter banner. <laughs> now would everyone who participated in that workshop please stand. We all worked as a team for about seven hours, but we had such a great time creating this wonderful banner, a true work of art. There was a lot of laughter and fellowship. We enjoyed getting to know each other and forming new friendships. Thank you, ladies. You may sit down. Now, would you bow your heads and we're gonna have a dedication prayer for this banner. Father in heaven, we praise you for having made this world and choosing us as your people. Please bless this banner that we have made for you and Bethesda Presbyterian Church. May this banner be a symbol of our gratitude for all of our blessings and our love to serve you and our church. As we dedicate this banner, may it bring curiosity, understanding, and joy to all who look upon it. Amen. Yeah, 
Please stand for the call to worship, please. <laughs> Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for the Lord is good. God's steadfast love endures forever. By God's great mercy, we have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Let us worship together. You may be seated. Our first congregational hymn today is found on page 240. Alleluia, alleluia, give thanks by composer Donald Fisher. Surrounded by alleluias, the text presents the good news of Easter. Christ is risen in this hymn. We sing Pauline, Apostle Paul, phrases that proclaim the new life we have in the risen Christ. Donald Fischel composed both text and tune rather spontaneously during the summer of 1971 in a house on the Church Street of Ann Arbor, Michigan. The hymn was first sung in services of the Word of God community in Ann Arbor. The hymn is also known as Alleluia Number 1 and is a simple but effective folk-like tune.
God's amazing love is this. While we were sinners, Christ died for us. Because we have faith in him, we dare to approach God with confidence. In faith and penitence, let us confess our sins before God and one another. Please join me for the prayer of confession. Holy and merciful God, in your presence we confess our sinfulness, our shortcomings, and our offenses against you. You alone know how often we have sinned in wandering from your ways, in wasting your gifts, in forgetting your love. Have mercy on us, O Lord, for we are ashamed and sorry for all we have done to displease you. Forgive our sins and help us to live in your life and walk in your ways for the sake of Jesus Christ our Savior. Hear the good news. Who is in a position to condemn? Only Christ and Christ died for us. Christ rose for us. Christ reigns in power for us. Christ prays for us. Anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old life has gone and new life has begun. Know that you are forgiven and be at peace. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Please share the peace of Christ with each other.
God, source of all light, by your word you give light to the soul. Pour out upon us the spirit of wisdom and understanding, that being taught by you in Holy Scripture, our hearts and minds may be open to know the things that pertain to life and holiness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. An Old Testament re a reading from the Old Testament, the book of Jeremiah 31, verses one through six. At that time, Jesus says to the Lord, I will be the God of all the families of Israel and they shall be my people. Thus says the Lord, the people who survived the sword found grace in the wilderness. When Israel sought for rest, the Lord appeared to him from far away. I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, I have continued my faithfulness to you. Again, I will build you and you shall be built, O virgin Israel. Again, you shall take your tambourines and go forth in the dance of the merrymakers. Again, you shall plant vineyards on the mountains of Samaria. The planters shall plant and shall enjoy the fruit. For there shall be a day when sentinels will call in the hill country of Ephraim. Come, let us go up to Zion, to the Lord our God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our next hymn was written by Fanny Crosby. Miss Crosby, blind from infancy, was America's best known hymn writer, composing some 8,000 hymns in her life. This, for a woman of the time, was unheard of, as most hymns were written by men, or if a woman did write the lyrics, they posed under a man's name. Miss Cosby lived until she was 95 years old. Some of her more well-known hymns are Blessed Assurance and Draw Me Nearer. On the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she went to Simon Peter 
and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved. And she said, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. The other disciple reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white, seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. Thinking that he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned toward him and cried in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them that I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news. I have seen the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Please rise and let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Bring the needs of the church, the world, and all in need to God's loving care, saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ, you promise to hear us when we pray to you in his name. Confident in your love and mercy, we offer prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Empower the church throughout the world in its life and witness. Break down the barriers that divide. At that, united in your truth and love, the church may confess your name, share one baptism, sit together at one table, and serve you in one common ministry. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. God, the rulers of the nations, move them to set aside their fear, greed, and vain ambition, and bow to your sovereign rule. Inspire them to strive for peace and justice, that all your children may dwell secure, <coughs> free of war and injustice. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Hear the cries of the world's hungry and suffering. Give us, who consume most of the earth's resources, the will to reorder our lives, that all may have their rightful share of the food, medical care, and shelter, and so have the necessities of life of dignity. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Restore among us a love of the earth you created for our home. Help us put an end to ravishing its land, air, and waters. And give us respect for all your creatures, that living in harmony with everything you have made, your whole creation may resound in an anthem of praise to your glorious name, Lord, in your mercy. Our Renew our nation in the ways of justice and peace. Guide those who make and administer our laws to build a society based on trust and respect. 
erase prejudices that oppress, free us from crime and violence, guard our youth from the perils of drugs and materialism. Give all citizens a new vision of a life of harmony. Lord, in your mercy. Strengthen this congregation in work and worship. Fill our hearts with your self-giving love, that our voices may speak your praise and our lives may conform to the image of your Son. Nourish us with your word and sacraments, that we may faithfully minister in your name and witness to your love and grace for all the world. Lord, in your mercy. Look with compassion on all who suffer. Support with your love those with incurable and stigmatized diseases, those unjustly imprisoned, those denied dignity, those that live without hope, those who are homeless or abandoned, as you have moved forward us in love to lead us to be present with them in their suffering in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Sustain those among us who need your healing touch. Make the sick whole. Give hope to the dying. Comfort those who mourn. Uphold all who suffer in body or mind. Not only those we know and love, but those known only to you, that they may know the peace and the joy of your supporting care. Lord, in your mercy. In your With thanksgiving, we remember before you those saints who bore witness to the light. Grant that we may preserve in faith to which we have been called, and at the end, behold your glory. O Lord, in your loving purpose, answer our prayers and fulfill our hopes in all things for which we pray. Give us the will to seek, to bring them about, for the sake of Jesus Christ and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Remember the words of the Lord Jesus. It is more blessed to give than to receive.
you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Blessed are you, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have these gifts to share. Accept and use our offering for your glory and for the service of your kingdom. Blessed be God forever. Amen. You may be seated. We invite you to listen and pray along silently to the Lord's Prayer. Many of our earlier hymns were written by men and were text only. They were spoken one line by a leader and then the next line by the congregation. It wasn't until later that music was added and had to be approved for singing in the early church. This hymn, simply put, the first stanza is about Christ giving us new life. The next discusses Christ as our friend who gives us strength and the last is about Christ coming to change the world. Please rise as we sing our last hymn, Christ is Risen, shout Hosanna on page 248. <laughs>
Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be and abide with you all. And you, be like Mary, and go and tell everyone Jesus Christ is alive. <laughs>